Hey everyone, it's Anthony Ramos. So, the Punky Brewster reboot we know is happening coming February 25th to Peacock, but we're gonna let you in on a little secret. Punky's BFF, Cherry, in the reboot, she actually has come out and is in a relationship with another woman. That other woman is played by the amazing Jessica Nicole, who joins me right now. How are you? I'm so good, how are you, Anthony? So good. Well, first off, I, you and I are similar in age, so I would bet that you probably were a fan of the original Punky Brewster, just like I was. I did watch the original Punky Brewster. Um, I was a cherry. I had always categorized myself as a cherry. I was a real rule follower. Um, but there was something about Punky that I always wanted to be because she was cool and she was spunky and she had attitude. And I feel like I've grown into that, but I didn't have it as a kid. So when I would watch the show, I'd be like, I'm a cherry, but I aim to be a Punky. <laughs> I love that. So now, okay, so the reboot is obviously in current time. So flash forward. 20 or so year, more than that, 20, 30 years. Um, and so, you know, the, the whole gang's back, there's Punky, there's Cherry. And so we're breaking the news today that Cherry, the character that you just said, you know, or more of that, she actually has <laughs> come out and is in a relationship with another woman. And that, that's where you come into all of this. So what is it like for you to kind of get to be a part of this storyline? It's been, um... It's been super exciting. This is actually the first queer role that I've ever played on network television, which, and I've been, I've been a professional actor for a long time. So this is a really big deal to me. Um, and it was, it was really interesting to come not only, it, you know, it's the first season, so it's not established as a reboot, but it is established as a show, you know, that has obviously lived on in people's memories for so long. So that kind of gives it a really interesting angle. It's like it's new, but um, it's it's kind of a part of everybody's collective childhood. Right. And it was just a really... Um, exciting like piece of history to kind of bring back. I think I saw all these reboots over the past few years and I was like, they're remaking this, they're bringing this back. And then when Punky came back, I was like, oh, that's the show that I wanna see. Those are the people that I wanna keep in touch with because there was something so, um, it was just really easy to relate to those characters on that show. It was really heartwarming and sweet. Um, so yeah, it's been a real thrill to join a cast. It's amazing. And you know, you mentioned that this is your first time playing a queer character. Um, and I know for you, in real life, it's important for you to speak out about you, your, you know, your um, being a queer woman of color, especially. I know you recently got married, I think, a couple years ago, right? Actually, seven years ago, but I've been with my partner for 15 years, so. I love that. I've been with mine for almost 13, so I love it when I hear those months. Oh my gosh, how cool! <laughs> yeah. But thinking about that, you know, what is, I would imagine it's even more impactful to be getting to play this because it is amazing because, you know, with Cherry's character, we're seeing two, you know, women of color in a same-sex relationship on this show. And I think that that is uh, slightly new too. I think um, to see two people who are uh, same-sex in a relationship and are both people of color, I think a lot of times when we particularly look at network television and we'll see queer relationships and it's like they want to play it safe and so they'll make it like a, a, a multi-ethnic relationship or something, which is totally fine. Obviously, you know, I have no issues with that. My partner is a white person, but I do think that there is something really specifically uh, special and important about seeing Black love depicted on television. And also the punky cast in general is super, super diverse. Like we've got kids of all kinds of uh, different backgrounds, obviously Cherry, and then there's me. It's kind of like this, this little melting pot of people in this cast, which I absolutely adore. <laughs> I think it's so great. Yeah, I know. And just thinking about that, you know, we at Gladder, we are always so pleased when we see Black love and, you know, queer um, stories represented. And thinking about the timing, you know, it's Black History Month in February. And we've got mm -hmm. this to come out right at the very end. So it's a, it's a nice moment, I think. It really is. It, it, feels, um, it feels good to be a part of, you know, pushing the envelope 
forward just a little bit at a time whenever we can. And also, I think the incorporation of this not being, you know, a sitcom about adults, this is a sitcom about a family. And so again, there are kids in this family, um, the kids, you know, Cherry's their auntie, they've known her for so long, and they're kind of introduced to Lauren, you know, in the in the second half of this show. And everybody embraces Lauren and really appreciates her and um, appreciates their love for one another. And I think that that's also a big deal to see. Uh, not that queerness exists just in adult lives. Queerness incorporates families and, and kids and all kinds of people. And that is something that I really want to see continue to be represented in television too. Couldn't agree more. And I think speaking of uh, mention, mentioning families, I think there's such a potential for families to see this program because it is, you know, that genre. And I think to have these important conversations, whereas maybe they, you know, they wouldn't. Yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, it's easy to kind of like dismiss television and say, you know, it's candy, it's something to occupy our time. But the truth is, and particularly during this pandemic, television has been a staple for so much of us. It's helped us get through the monotony of the days. And so we really do need to rely on media like television and film to see, you know, different aspects of the way people live just because it might not look like what your life is. It's definitely somebody else's life. And I think that um, seeing that over and over again, you know, maybe if you are not, you know, you don't live in a community where there are a lot of out queer people, or maybe you don't know that many in your life, it's still important to have them be a part of what you see depicted in the world, because then it makes it less, um, I don't know, less strange. Things that you're unfamiliar with tend to be strange and weird and make you uncomfortable. And so the more that you see these things, you know, we're hoping the more people will feel comfortable and want to invite this kind of energy into their regular lives too. Yeah, exactly. And what do you think it would have meant to you, to, you know, as a younger person growing up to have seen a story like this? I, I, I truly do not have words for how uh, powerful seeing uh, black love, queer love, uh, trans people, non-binary people. If I had seen that as a kid, like, <laughs> I don't even know where I would be like right now. I would be like in outer space living my best life as a star or something. It, it, it is so essential to, again, uh, consistently be seeing people who are different than you. It creates empathy, it creates compassion, it uh, expands your ability to, to love, you know, not just the stuff that you're familiar with, but the stuff that you might be unfamiliar with. I think it's really significant. And, and what a treat for kids to be able to watch a TV show today and say, oh, that's like my friend, or oh, that's like me, or I wonder if that's like me. I think the, the, the cue, you know, in LGBTQ obviously is for queer, but it's for questioning too. So it allows you to have a safe space to have these conversations with yourself and hopefully your family and, and understand a little bit more of the world that you might not have been, um, you know, able to see yourself. Yeah, representation is key. And, you know, that's what I'm glad what we're working for every day is to have accurate and inclusive, you know, representations of the LGBTQ community in media. So let's talk about you've been very busy on Instagram uh, during the pandemic. I think all of us are such fans of these creations that you with fashion. So wait, so basically, you almost make everything that you wear at this point, right? You make every single thing that I wear. I don't buy ready to wear anymore. Um, I do not participate in fast fashion anymore. What I do is sometimes, well, you know, before the pandemic, I would go to stores and look at clothes and be like, ooh, I can recreate that. Or maybe I could doll this up a bit. So I'll take my inspiration from, you know, the streets, from Pinterest, from stores, but I make every single thing that um, that I wear. And I make shoes too. I make a lot of shoes. I knit sweaters. I got into pottery this year. So. <laughs> I saw those, well, I know shoes is, I think, I mean, it's one thing obviously to make a really nice t-shirt, but if you're making shoes, that's so impressive. I saw some clogs that you made. Yes, yes, I just made a pair of clogs last night and it's so funny, they're like a little bit too big, which is the tricky part of making shoes. When you're making clothes, you can try them on as you're making it and adjust it to fit. But with shoes, you kind of just gotta like keep your fingers crossed and hope for the best. So these are a little bit too big for me and I'm gonna send them to my mom this week. And she's very, very excited about getting some new clogs. That's amazing. And it looks like you're in your, uh, your work environment right now. I'm in my, I call this the craft room. 
Um, it's it's the basement of our house, but it's pretty great because I've got a ton of space. So that's wow. my sewing table and my sewing machines back there. And then these are all my cabinets. I just got them and I painted them cool colors. So this is kind of the area that I, I come in to decompress. Uh, making for me is a real therapeutic experience. Uh, it lets me zone out and it's a it's an art form that I don't have to collaborate with anybody else on. I don't have to get a yes or an okay from anybody else. <laughs> so it's been um, it's been a real saving grace during this pandemic for sure. Do you have any plans to sell it or do anything or is it strictly just something that you're doing for yourself? I really, I really try and keep it this safe, special thing that I only do for myself. I do make stuff for my partner and my dad all the time. They ask me for things a lot because I can make stuff, you know, catered to their bodies. But I actually did when I got back into pottery at the beginning of the pandemic, I did sell some of my stuff because I thought, you know, I can't wait. What am I going to do with 30 coffee cups? <laughs> in my house? So um, it was fun, you know, I'm thinking of doing it again and maybe donating the profits to um, SELA, which is an, uh, an organization here in Los Angeles that helps the unhoused population, provides resources for them, um, you know, tries to get them in a safe, healthy space. So I might do some kind of thing where I make a lot of stuff and just sell it all and the proceeds will go to that. We'll see. We'll see how. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Have you, um, you know, obviously in the normal world, there would have been a red carpet premiere for Punky Brewster coming back. You thought about what you would have created for that red carpet premiere? Excuse you. Okay, I have <laughs> an entire closet called Red Carpet DIY. Love and it. periodically, I will just make extremely fancy outfits. I have not worn one of them in like, obviously, since the pandemic, but even before then, because I was on a show that was shooting in Vancouver. So I've just never got to go anywhere. Right. So I am I have like been working towards this my whole life just waiting for somebody to call me and say, Look, we need you on a red carpet in 45 minutes. Can you be there? <laughs> I'm so You're many things. Going there. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I say on the 25th, when Punky Brewster starts uh, streaming on Peacock, I say you pull out one of those dresses, make your own at home red carpet, and post it on Instagram. That is such a good idea, Anthony. Right? <laughs> I, I love, love that. that. So much. I'm going to do it, and I'm going to make Claire film me. It's going to happen. And then I'll also put this out into the world. So 2022 Vlad Media Awards, not this one. This one is going to be virtual uh, for obvious reasons. Yes. But when Punky Brewster maybe, you know, gets Glad Award nominated, you can have your red carpet moment at the Glad Media Awards. I'm so ready. <laughs> I love that. Um, well, anyway, it's been such a pleasure chatting. We're so Thank excited you. for this role. We're so excited for Punky Brewster. Uh, this new series to start streaming on Peacock on February 25th, everyone. So be sure and check it out. Jessica, so nice to see you. And hopefully I'll see you in person soon enough. I would love that. Thank you so much, Anthony.